There are very few film directors who can blend the three Ds, dating, disability, and diversity into one film, but film director Nathan Morris has done just that with My Eyes Are Up Here. My Eyes Are Up Here is the story of a disabled woman who sets off on a mission to get the morning after pill after a clumsy one night stand. But this live action short film will receive its New York premiere at the Oscar qualifying Tribeca Film Festival in contention this June. Nathan Morris began his career making award-winning documentaries in New Zealand before moving to London and then New York to work in music, comedy, reality TV, directing and writing, even for artists such as Rihanna and Lady Gaga. And we have actress and model Jillian Mercado with us as well. Many of you recognize her from the L Word, Generation Q, and many fashion magazines. Now diagnosed with spastic muscular dystrophy as a child, she believes her interest in fashion originated from her mother, a dressmaker, and her father, once a shoe salesman. Well, she brings her character to life in My Eyes Are Up Here as a model and wheelchair user, grounding the story further in authentic lived experience. Let's welcome film director Nathan Morris and actress Jillian Mercado and the incredible short film My Eyes Are Up Here to the show. Welcome. Thank you. Thank you. Great to be here. Well, Nathan, let's just kick this off. What inspired you to create this multifaceted film? Well, I read the script, the film, as you alluded to before. By the way, you should do PR for us. If you could just follow me around and just talk about me when I have a, 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 a downward day, that would just be amazing. Well, we can work that out. <laughs> okay, great. Um, the film comes from um, the headspace and the life, really, of uh, Mindy Verdi. Uh, uh, she's a writer who worked with a friend of mine called Arthur, and it's very much based on her real lived experience. Um, I got to know Arthur, I managed to see the script, and I was like, please, 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 please let me make this. I love it, I connected so much with the actress, the uh, character, and I just really loved it, so I kind of begged them to let me make it. So that's kind of how it started. Well, I'm gonna kind of direct this next question to both of you, because honestly, I loved the film, the title is definitely a play on words, but there seems to be a much deeper meaning concerning this film. What is it? Go, Jillian. No, you want me to go? Um, I think mostly um, it's about our humanized experience as living as someone with a visible disability or a disability for that matter, um, and how we have always viewed the world, but unfortunately how the ableist world has viewed our world mm -hmm. you know so as far as like my eyes are up here i saw it as like i am here i am present i am with you in the same space but you are choosing not to see me as a person so that's the take i took up from it and i actually picked that up in this film and nathan i have to give you chops for the way that you have put this together and filmed it but um for you, what does this film mean? I mean, I really wanted to just to make a romantic comedy. So I, like you say, I think it works on two different levels. There is that, and we, that's something I could relate to, like having a rough time, a rough day, not on this level, but like, and being scared of letting someone into your life and your heart and maybe have a relationship. So it's great, it works on that level and the level that Jillian just spoke about. So. Yeah, to me, it's about a lot of different things, which I think is really great. And we're going to we're going to get into that. Now, Jillian, what was it about this script that got your attention to play Sonia? Um, mostly I related a lot to her. Um, we shared a lot of um, lived experiences that I, in my college days, probably had dabbled. <laughs> um, but also, I think because of her honesty and her way of viewing society is something that I related to a lot. Um, also, she just, you know, wants to, to be seen, you know, by everyone, wants to be respected, wants to um, be loved, but has this like barrier of strength and survival that I can relate to very much. Um, yeah. I, I, yeah. When I was watching the film, uh, and, it's, and it's early in the film, uh, mm -hmm. when uh, Ben Cura is took the sign and laid it down so, yeah. so you could come out of the doorway. And the woman that came into the, the older woman that came into the scene, 
I thought was kind of funny because she treated you as a complete human being, but she looks at the guy like, what is wrong with you? (laughs) And I thought that was almost a reversed role uh, in this film. Nathan, was, is that something you were going for? Yeah, I mean, all the characters, because it was such a long development process with this, all the characters have these huge backstories, which you can't, you're probably like, why did you do that? But it really helps to, with the performances and stuff. So there's really her disregard and contempt because that's actually, it's a mother son relationship. And she's, she just has contempt for him and just sees um, Sonia as a commodity, really, a model, a, a clothes hanger someone and so she yeah you're right there's just this like she's this coldness to it and she doesn't get it and then she was just so appalled by the actions of last night when she discovers and then that, that's a whole level of oh, the exactly now now i know both of you brought to light uh, a subject that is very uncomfortable for a lot of people uh people don't know how to react in the presence of someone with a disability um with the title your eyes are up here You know, a lot of people instantly judge, you know, they see the wheelchair or maybe they see a a deformity of some type, Uh, maybe someone with Down syndrome. But your film places us in Jillian's wheelchair, so to speak. Uh, Was that part of the goal? Yeah, I mean, this is going to sound funny, but I'm not sure if you watched a great British Bake Off. They've had a couple of people with disabilities on that show and they've never mentioned it. They've just talked about the cooking. They just get on with it. And so that was a very clear intent to just, it's a love story, but we, we happen to have a character with, with, in a wheelchair. Um, and then we see all these things that she has to go through. Gillian's better place to talk about than I. But, and Aminda, the creator of the script, the original script um, with Arthur, um, really wanted her to be seen in certain lights and not use tropes and not have it be a pity party. But like, this woman's strong and awesome. I kind of want to be like her. Um, like she's awesome because of who she is and what she does. Not she's not defined. She's defined by her actions, and that's what we wanted to to, to tell to show. And you did it perfectly. And when I when I watched the film, all I saw of Sonya was this strong woman, literally taking. Uh, no prisoners in life. You know, she knows she has a disability. She knows how other people react, but she has, she holds her head up and, and she holds her head up, um, you know, with, with great pride in, in, in a way and, and is going to tackle life no matter what it's going to bring because she is as equal and as powerful to anyone else on the planet. And I love that. And, and I really uh, pulled that from this film. And, and you know, we Jillian, I want to ask you because, you know, being a person of color with a disability in this film, both areas are very underrepresented in the media. Uh, what do you hope this film will achieve in that area? I mean, I, I hope that I mean, I always hope with things that I do or put myself into that there is a new perspective, a new outlook on what people see, you know, what is perceived, the stereotypes that are unfortunately given. Um, And hopefully this will create opportunity, you know, for people out there to, um, you know, in the workplace, give jobs and and feel seen and feel heard. Um, And I think that's that's the biggest takeaway I hope that people get to learn something new and to, yes. um, you know, go back home thinking I had this perspective on what, you know, these type of people lived or, um, yeah. And, and now I see something different and, and I see it in a, in a newer light. Um, and that's all that we can ask for. Well, what kind of, uh, what, what do you want with people with disabilities who will see this, who will eventually see this yeah. film? What do you want them to take from it? That we see you, we hear you, and we love you, and you are as part of this community as a whole, as anybody, you know? Um, and you should not let anyone dictate who you are. You can only dictate who you are. Exactly. And, you know, and I think a lot of people need to realize, too, that uh, looking back, uh, the late Stephen Hawkins, uh, you know, what he achieved. So, 
Yeah. All things are possible. And, uh, and you just, you just got to put yourself out there, but to both of you, uh, how did you direct, this is for you, Nathan and Jillian, how to portray to the viewers to understand that a person with disabilities can date and have sex? Speaking from personal experience. (laughs) (laughs) Um, Go ahead, Nathan. Do do tell. (laughs) No, I think, yeah, start it with you, Jillian, and then I'll come in after. So it's very different. Um, No, I I think that's a good point because unfortunately I had to learn it the hard way that I could, could have never understood why people you know, had this misconception of us not partaking in this beautiful human experience that we all, you know, eventually one day do, Um, you know, and it was very, 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 uh, I think a harsh reality for me to understand that people do have this mindset. Um, Speaking from personal experience with family and, and trying to sit them down and say, no, we deserve to have love. We deserve to have this experience as well. Um, and having a disability is just a part of who I am. You know, it's like having brown hair or blue mm-hmm. eyes. It's just a part of you. It doesn't define you. Um, and I think that's really important for people to understand that we also love having that experience. And it's the most purest experience to have. I think as a human being in this world Um, and love is love. It doesn't matter how it looks like. It doesn't matter how it feels like. It's just, it is what it is. Um, And we also deserve to have that experience. Yeah. And I I saw that in the film, I guess it was um, towards the end where, you know, both are standing on the sidewalk and, you know, Sonia is saying, well, I'm, I'm very busy. And, and I guess that was probably putting up the uh, protection mode up very, very quickly. And then then he's trying to be very sincere and wanting to go on another date. And I just there was a sweetness to it, but there was a realism to it as well, especially from your reaction and real life. Yeah, I mean, I think that she Sonia definitely had this, you know, letting her guard down, understanding that this, you know, real, this guy really saw her really wanted to like be a part of her world. Um, And I think that Sonia has had a lot of moments of survival where she's had to like put tons of layers and tons of walls up so that she can live as authentically of her experience as she could. Um, And unfortunately with the society that we live in, it's really hard for someone like myself and Sonia um, to, you know, follow a career they really want to follow or do the things that they really care for without having the mindset of an ableist person, you know, and how to navigate that and then in the world um, where both worlds can exist. So I think in that part, Sonia had that realization, like, you know what? I live my life to the fullest and I deserve to have this. I deserve to have this love because this person wants to be a part of me, even through all of the adventures that happened during that day, this person still is here. And that's really important. Very much so. And and Nathan, um, for you as a director, uh, how was it filming um, the short film in the areas of, let's say just, just dating and that opening scene of, of both of them in bed? Yeah, I really enjoyed doing that opening scene. I sort of come from a world of, um, I've made a lot of documentary and stuff. So for me, like I don't, didn't know this world very well. I still don't know it that, that well, but I'm learning every day. But so I had Aminda alongside me working as a, a director's attachment and it's based on her life. So I would be constantly like, are we getting the gaze right? Is the camera in the right place? Blah, blah, blah. It's just the right tone. Because I was really, I really wanted the tone. I wanted her to be strong and powerful. And there's some shots that people that I've just cut around because I knew people would, with our animal brains and the way we visualize things and translate them, people would perceive things as weakness. So I was really trying very hard to make her just powerful and strong no matter where she was and what she was doing. So it was done with a lot of intent. Yeah. I love that opening scene. It's really fun. Yeah. And, um, you did it well. I will say that. Thank you, will, you. you did it well. Uh, 
And I guess I can say you did it in a very respectful way as, uh, as well, because, you know, I think in cinema, when a perceived sex scene is shot, I think a lot of times I kind of like going back to the old way of Hollywood back into the 50s to where a man and a woman walk into a room and the door closes and that's it. Let the, <laughs> let the viewer have the imagination, you know, and not necessarily have to show anything, but in a way... You, you kind of did that here as well, because for a split second when I started watching it, I didn't have a clue that Sonya uh, had a disability. So you filmed it to where the viewer is going to get a gradual surprise. And then you're like, wow. So you got the eye, man. You got the eye. Oh, thank you. I really appreciate it. And then I'm glad that come across because that was the goal to be like, oh, it's just awkward. And then you're like, oh, hang about. There's, a, there's something else happening here. So well, I'm really pleased to come across. Well, this question is for both of you as well. And I did find it odd that the two women on the bus had such a strong in your face exchange with Jillian's character. Um, what was the goal with this tense exchange? I, I think that comes from and during script editing that was taken out for a while when I uh, I made it. I made sure it got put back in, but that's based on real life. I lived in London a long time. Um, I remember <laughs> London's a beautiful city with beautiful people, but there are like all big cities. There's the odd rascal. Let's face it. And um, I remember once I was surrounded by twelve, like thirteen-year-old kids threatening to beat me up unless I gave them money. And it's a really weird situation when everyone's this high and you're like, but there's a lot of them. <laughs> so, and I know Aminda um, had situations like like this on the bus and when we were script editing it would be like is, is this real is this realistic and it was shocking to me so then i thought oh, that's really important to get to get it out there and it's quite a london like i'm in new york now and i remember i did script readings with people in new york and they were like that wouldn't happen and i was like yeah it would you know the thing that i picked up from the two women on the bus was this sense of and what we see in society in society today this sense of entitlement that you have the right to be disrespectful to be a troll to be ugly to other people instead of just showing respect kindness um it takes the same amount of effort um so i was like whoa you know why do people continue to act like this but Jillian, have you ever had an exchange like that in real life? Yeah. <laughs> I grew really? up in New York. Yeah, yeah. I love New York as as Nathan <laughs> very beautifully uh started uh what he was saying as well. Um we I think specifically people who have disabilities or visible ones for that matter, there's a lot of people who don't humanize us, who think that questions like for example, what happened to you is an appropriate question to ask, because I I see it as a way of um, I don't think if someone who had a non who was non disabled would have that question asked to them on a constant basis, you know. Um, if someone chooses to you know rock pink hair, I don't think they get the question of why 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 do you have pink hair, you know. Um, but I I have had unfortunately that happened to me not in this kind of way but in a very inappropriate kind of question kind of way where just people don't humanize us they think it's okay to ask these questions for their benefit other than just like googling it yeah you know, I'm more like internet keep, nowadays <laughs> yeah because I'm more like keep your mouth shut because I, I was trying to put myself in the place of the two women and I'm sitting and I'm, and I'm sitting here watching the film and I was like, wait a minute, if I was sitting there, my reaction would have been, and knowing that you backed over my bag and what would I, whatever was in the bag that you heard, we hear a crunch. I wouldn't have been offended. It would have, I would have looked at it like, ah, my fault. I left it in the way because mm. she, she needs a place to, to put a wheelchair on this bus, I would have taken it myself as ah my my dumb move, and I would have actually apologized. 
You never yeah, put no, it in the bag. I mean, there. there could have been there could have been so many different scenarios. I mean, honestly, it could have been a whole different fight. But I think the the argument was more of an attacking of this person's disability, of Sonia's disability, rather than the bag that was ruined. Right. And you know, one of the things that I also picked up with was with Sonia's reaction, you know, at first it seemed defensive. Which I could understand, but I love this part of the of this film. But when then she says to the two women, "What is wrong with you?" <laughs> to me, that right there was the perfect line to reverse the roles. Was that the intention, Nathan? Oh yeah, and she uses some pretty <laughs> colorful language too. And that's uh, I, I I call that scene um, Sonia's fight scene. Because that's when she gets up. She's like, no, I'm not putting up with this. And that was a pretty intense thing to film for uh, Gillian, I think. It was a pretty, it was a pretty fraught shoot day. Um, and, and add to that, that intensity. Yeah. And yeah, I, I call it the fight scene. Because she's really swinging. And, you know, and it, it, it really kind of, I don't know, maybe I just, you know, I, I grew up, you know, being taught what manners are. You know, opening the door for the lady. Um, if you're walking down the sidewalk, she walks on the inside, not near the curb. So I, you know, so when I looked at the at the exchange in the bus, I'm like, I just wish she would just hit them both. Because <laughs> I'm like, we now live in a society where people are that freaking ugly, and some of them just need a smack upside the head. <laughs> I agree. <laughs> Yeah, Jillian's on my side here. Uh, but uh, Nathan, what was it like to have your film selected for the Tribeca Film Festival? Uh, should I admit it? I cried. I shed a tear. Like yeah. when I got the actual notification, it was before the official announcement and it was like two or three weeks. So that two or three weeks of not being able to tell anyone was really hard. And when the announcement happened, because I was like, that made a mistake. When the actual announcement was official, I, uh, yeah, I, I shed a little tear, which is, uh, and I was kind of surprised at my reaction. I was like, well, this means a lot. And it's just, it, it's so encouraging and surprising and exciting. And yeah, it's, it means uh, this film took so much hard work. Um, so it's really gratifying on so many levels. Yeah. You know, a lot of people don't realize how much work actually goes into a short film. They think about these 50, $100 million full featured films, but you know, I look at the short film as it's a work of art because you're, you're working with such a very short medium and you have to tell a absolute complete story and get the point across. And you have done this uh, uh, absolutely uh, fantastic, and, and Jillian does add that super element to it. Yeah, she's amazing. Thank you. <laughs> so, and, uh, so I understand that, you know, uh, ladies and gentlemen, and I, and I want you to realize how incredible this is. To have your film selected for Tribeca, there were over 8,000 um submissions placed and to be chosen it's a very very high honor and not only that this is oscar qualifying as well correct yeah it is <laughs> exactly exactly and i i think you have a very strong chance so uh the you know amongst the three of us you know we should envision the golden statue for next year in 2024 and my eyes are up here. What an incredible film. Uh, and for both of you, what is next? I mean, you just said it. <laughs> <laughs> the Oscar. I love it. That, that, I love that vision. I love that. that and that, that's, that's what we vision. need to have. We need to have that much faith. Yeah, and we're working on the possibility of uh, bringing this out to a series. There's been interest in that, which yeah. is really exciting. I've got a couple of other projects, uh, a couple of feature films that I'm working on. So as soon as I'm finished here, I'm back in my little, my writing cave and, and get back on to like new projects and try and uh, use this as a platform to 
to make better and bigger things and just keep well, on going. Well, you both have extremely bright futures ahead of you. And Jillian, I know that you'll continue to act. Um, are you still within the fashion world? I certainly am. It's like my baby. I, I'll never, she's my first love. <laughs> Well, you know, fashion and film go hand in hand because the most asked question on the red carpet is, what are you wearing? And, uh, but <laughs> hey, I'm sure that that's what they're going to be asking at Tribeca, Tribeca and all of the next film festivals. And hopefully, and you got to promise me, if you end up on the Oscar shortlist, you both have to come back. Oh, we'd love to. Yeah. Easy. For, for people reasons. Yeah. Guaranteed. <laughs> Well, ladies and gentlemen, when you when you get the opportunity to see this incredible short film, My Eyes Are Up Here, well, it's a must-see film for all of us for multiple reasons. This phenomenal short film can be seen at Tribeca Film Festival on June 11th, 14th, and 17th. And Jillian and Nathan, again, much success to both of you. I look forward to having you back. And again, maybe there's an Oscar in both of your futures. And ladies and gentlemen, as for me, I will see you next time right here on the Ward Bond Show, as well as Bond on Film.